You know, this week I want to talk about something that's really important right now to understand. And the title of this video is God's Commissioning People to Get Really, Really Involved in Culture in 2024. I think God's raising people up as missionaries or cultural warriors and prophets to mainstream media and politics, entertainment, education, every sphere of authority. There's been such a shaking going on in the church. I talked about it last week where there's shaking in leadership teams and what to do about that. So make sure to go back and watch that video. As a matter of fact, make sure to subscribe to this channel where you can get these videos every Sunday to supplement your faith, as well as our weekly commentary. But, you know, every sphere of authority God wants to touch. He wants to speak into. He wants to bring grace to. He wants to bring compassion to. But we are seeing people who are called. And I'm talking to people every day who are being called to do things that Christians weren't thinking about 25 years ago. Christians weren't thinking about 10 years ago, but they're saying, I, I'm called to be a dancer. Does that make sense? Like, I know that this is like, some people are missionaries to China. I'm called to be a missionary to dance. And I'm supposed to be able to reach those people. And I think of the Moravian people, if you've known anything about the Moravian prayer movement, one of the things that marked it is that there was even missionaries that would sell themselves into indentured servant to, servitude because they knew that indentured servants didn't have church services. So they'd say, well, somebody has to go there. Somebody has to go and reach them for the gospel. And so we'll go. And I think that God is sending people into a really profound role that they maybe wouldn't have played in another generation. But God's saying, hey, I want to touch people here, maybe in Hollywood. I want to touch people here in politics. I want to touch people here in, you know, who are against human trafficking. I want to touch people and I want to use you. I want to use you and give you authority. I want to use you to serve. I want to use you to do the hard work and therefore to reach people who wouldn't be reached without you going there. Because the majority, over 50% of Christians right now don't even attend a weekly service. That means that people who don't know Christ, we're seeing statistically the younger generation, it used to be like 50 to 60% could tell you basic Bible stories. Now it's the majority cannot tell you only up to 30% or 35% could tell you a basic Bible story or anything about Jesus in America, at least. I'm not sure what it's like in other countries, but I know that there's many countries who are more liberal than us. So how are we going to know who's being sent? And they're not going to come with arguments, condemnation, protests, but with solutions, love, and projects that help bring the opposite in the mix. I'm not saying protesting is wrong. I think we need to argue at times, but I think there's people who are being sent and they have the opposite spirit of what's in the world. And the opposite spirit is to manifest something that the world doesn't have yet. So the world only has so many things, solutions. They only have so many ideas. If you look at United Nations plans over the AIDS epidemic, if you look at you know, the World Economic Forum looking at different nations in poverty, it's very limited in its scope, even with the most brilliant minds in the in the world right now. It's very limited. And a lot of it is very oppressive when you look at it, when you actually break it down. But God is sending people to maybe work alongside organizations that some Christians say, that's so antichrist. I would never want to work for Microsoft. I know Christians who work at Microsoft or Google or these kinds of places and are having great impact because they're coming in as a missionary, which means they're coming in to serve. And they're coming in to see people's lives change. They're coming in using that as an occupation. We talked this week about Mike Johnson and some of my social commentary, who's the Speaker of the House. And he took that position as a place of spiritual authority that he believes his biblical worldview will help change the way that Congress is run. And that's how we're supposed to come. Now, some people look at this and say, you got to separate your Christianity from maybe state or politics or your perspective. Well, the core of the gospel is that it's supposed to affect us and change us from the inside out and cause us to be more effective members of the world, not in the sense of we are of the world, but in the sense that what we have to bring the world, like Solomon, King Solomon was a great example of this, that he brought infrastructure to the city and to building process, to judicial systems, these kinds of things. He brought a wisdom and a revelation that was rare. And I believe Joseph is another example of somebody who came in as a dream interpreter and became like the governor of all of Egypt. And you look at what he brought into Egypt when there was a time of great famine. He not only had enough provisions stored up because he knew it was going to happen because he had revelation, but he also had, because of his, his family who were is, Israelites, he was able to bring uh, something to his family that spared them from the extreme famine and appoint them. I mean, they went to his, you know, his courts to become, you know, maybe just servants of the house of Egypt, just to try and be saved through this terrible famine. And they got appointed as, you know, brothers of royalty. It was just so wild. So God's raising people. He's going to raise up people around new media that's going to counter the culture of what mainstream media has. And we're seeing it happen right now online. Like Daily Wire is one of the most listened to news media. And several of the people are involved with it are incredible Christians behind the scenes. And it's being listened more than mainstream media outlets. And it's online. It doesn't have a channel, so to speak. But we're watching TBN and CBN as well, like TBN, who I'm with. 
uh, and TBN has center point news. We're watching it happen with center point and also other news media. We're getting the same sometimes ratings or reviews as some of the mainstream news media. And it's, you know, center point news, which was the nightly news show on TBN. It's, it's relatively new and it's already getting incredible, you know, uh, viewership, which is wild. And CBN news, which has 700 club is one of the most viewed shows of Christianity, but we're starting to see new online media that will not just be reactive to the evil in the world, but it's really providing fair reporting and has solution-based perspectives that's gonna rally people, not just Christians, but rally people to activism. It's gonna rally Christians to pray. It's gonna rally people to have a different mindset going forward. We're gonna see many Christian celebrities in music movies and even preachers who haven't touched issues that are controversial that are gonna get involved with causes and even sometimes politicians who are encouraging voting in a way that helps protect the legacy of Christian freedom and values that we hold dear. And this is really contradictory to where a lot of nations have gone. We might have had one person who would stand this way, but what happens when there's tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions, who stand in the occupation that God sent them to, and they're not standing to be political, but they're standing to fight for freedom, the freedom that Christ brings. And sometimes that has issues that they're called to specifically, whether it be like a human trafficking or foster care or something else, racism, and they're called to bring a God solution. They're called to bring a narrative that's not existing in the current form. And they're not just called to bring it to the church, but they're called to bring it into culture. We're going to see zeal imparted to Christians that won't create zealots. Like you see zealots are people who are almost cultish in their belief system, where it's like they're trying to soccer mom an agenda so much that they defy or even um, defile love. Love's no longer on the table. But we're going to see people have a zeal that's a God zeal, where it's the zeal that will accomplish things because it's done out of love. It's like a parent's zeal for their child. It's where a parent loves their child so much that they make room and opportunities for them, and they also protect them from evil. They protect them from having wrong boundaries. And we're going to see that inspire hope for what God could do in a generation. I love that scripture where it says, the zeal of the house of the Lord has consumed me. And I feel we're going to see people who are raised up in zeal who are in these occupations, whether it's an NFL player, a doctor, a lawyer. I know in Exploring the Marketplace, our podcast, if you've never listened to it, I'm going to encourage you, listen to it. It's in the top 0.1% or 0.1% in the world as a podcast because we tell stories. We hear from people. We interview everyday people in their careers, and they're talking about their breakdowns and their breakthroughs. And by that vulnerability of their how they've gotten to success, which is usually through a lot of hardship, when they share that story and their connection to Christ in the middle of it, you see yourself in that story and you go, wow, there's alternatives and there's options. There's a, there's way to, ways to hear God and see God in my life that causes me to have a leg up in life, that causes me to have a fullness. And I think we're going to see people who are involved in areas of society that create a different story. Again, it created a new narrative. Ultimately, we're going to see broken human testimonies put on display in places of culture that help give hope and life as the world takes notice of what God can do and see options that man cannot bring to issues of racism and poverty and government and even other things that we care about that sometimes there's just so much division over. And we're going to see people who bring a story, a testimony, just like Martin Luther King brought a testimony of like, I have a dream and I have a dream. And even though he didn't write that speech, he was the one to give it because he gave it out of his DNA, out of the culture of his heart. We watch this happen over and over and over where somebody will share their story. And I even think of some of the people like Reagan, Ronald Reagan, and some of the story that he came into America with. And he helped to tell America its story back to them again as a father of the nation. We're going to see other people who are raised up into positions. Some will be positions of great influence. Some will be positions that will have great influence, but they aren't great influential positions. There's people who could be janitors of corporations who can have great spiritual power and authority to speak the right words at the right time. So don't despise what God's calling you to, but actually fall in love with the people you get to influence and minister to and love on because of the calling you have. And each one of us has a destiny and a calling. Each one of us has a purpose on this earth. And many of us have been at war with our purpose because it is in line with maybe the creativity that's inside of you, or it's in line with the career you're choosing. And God wants to show you how to harness the power of your career, the power of your creativity, the power of the things that you're most interested in to actually be realms of authority for your Christianity right now. So I'm gonna pray over you. Holy Spirit, would you show us how you want us to influence, how you want us to bring transformation through our little lives to culture, God. We want to see so much transformation. We want to see so much of your power, both inside of us 
But Lord, we don't wanna just talk about issues. We wanna see your influence over issues. We don't wanna just talk about what's bad. We wanna manifest through your, the power of your Holy Spirit and your agenda biblically. We wanna manifest your desire and your will on the earth, not our desire, not our will. We're not like new age manifestors who are like, I want a new car, so I'm gonna manifest it. We are seeing what's in the Bible and we stand in awe of what you've done before. And we say in our generation, Will you do it again, God? Will you do it through me? And some of you are feeling it right now. You're feeling pulled by God because he's anointed you for something that maybe you haven't fully reconciled that this is your sphere of authority. Maybe you wanted to be a pastor your whole life or go into ministry. Maybe you wanted to do something and that's not where God's calling you. Maybe he's calling you to something that you're actually more passionate about you have an idealism of what it would be like to minister over here, but God's actually calling you to have authority where you're already planted, to bloom where you're planted. And I wanna encourage you, ask God to use you where you're at right now. Ask God to be with you where you're at right now and be bold. I love Joshua one night where it says, have I not commanded you to be strong and bold and of good courage? That's where you're at right now. And I wanna encourage you, you're a missionary and God's gonna show you what that means in your life. And I'll see you next time. Make sure to subscribe to this channel, like these videos, and also I'm gonna tell you like this video is made by people just like you who believe in ministry and they believe in ministry in places like YouTube. And we have so many incredible partners and donors who make these videos possible. Go to bullsministries.com today and click on give and you can find a way to become a partner where we get to give back to you if you give a residual or monthly donation. We get to give resources and prayer. You can be part of our monthly meeting where you'll feel part of a team that's changing the world because we are and it's beautiful because of people just like you. See you next time.